Nancy Armour, USA Today Sports. Um, Caitlin, you and Lisa and your teammates have talked about how you've grown emotionally, maturity-wise. Um, and Gabby was saying yesterday that you would have had a very different reaction to yesterday's game in years past. How, how have you grown, and, and how did you do that, or what went into that growth? Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing for myself is, you know, at the beginning of my career, um, I thought everything I did had to be perfect, whether it was a lot of it always relied on my shooting. Um, and I think over the course of my career, I've been one that's been able to, you know, realize I'm not going to be perfect every game. Um, there's going to be good games. There's going to be get bad games. Um, but I still have to be somebody that my team can lean on in those moments. And I think also accepting, like, I don't have to score every single point for this team to win. And I think that's exactly what you saw last night. Um, you know, I didn't shoot the ball great. You know, I, I made some shots there at the end. I thought Nika played tremendous defense, uh, picked me up 94 feet, um, you know, and that's some of the things that South Carolina is going to do too. And um, I think as a team in general, like our offense wasn't great, especially in that first half. But, you know, we went into the locker room at halftime. Nobody was flustered. I wasn't frustrated with myself. Um, you know, I just continued to chip away and make some big shots there in the fourth quarter and set my teammates up for success. And, I thought Hannah Stolke played really good, so I was trying to get her the ball as much as I could. I thought Kate came up with some big plays. So um, I definitely think that's the biggest way I've matured, matured and, and grown over the course of my four years is just, you know, never get rattled by things that don't go your way. You know, basketball isn't a perfect game. That's what's going to happen, and um, that's what I'm honestly the most proud of. We're going to take our next question from Doug, if you could raise your hand. The order after Doug will be Jonathan and then Griffin. Thank you. Uh, Caitlin Doug Feinberg, the AP. Uh, two part question. First part is, as an Iowa native, Iowa kid, to know that you're now one game away from bringing the first title to Iowa. What mm -hmm. does that mean to you to finish off your legacy at the school? The second part is just the bigger picture of, it's you guys in South Carolina who's going for a perfect season. Mm -hmm. I don't think women's basketball could ask for a better championship game than this, based on the success that this season's had with attendance, viewing, all the other mm -hmm. stuff going on. Yeah, I think. Uh, to be able to bring a national title back to the University of Iowa would be super special. Um, obviously, it's special in its own regard, making back-to-back -back national title games. I know everybody would come up to me before the season started and was like, only one thing left to do. And I don't think people realize how hard it is to get to this point. So I'm just proud of our group. And um, you know, we lost two people that contributed a lot to our program over and you know, last season, and you know, all we focused on was, you know, it wasn't what we didn't have; it's what we did have inside our locker room. And um, I couldn't be more pr proud of our group and just the resiliency that we showed all year. You know, we've had a couple tough losses, and I think that's what's made us ready for these type of moments. Um, and then, you know, I think this matchup is, you know, you can't ask for anything better. Um, I think it speaks to the way women's basketball has just been tremendous on all levels all throughout the year. And um, you know, we know we have our hands full. Um, everybody around the country knows South Carolina has been the team all year. They've deserved that. They've earned it. Um, you know, they've just been incredible. I mean, I've turned on the TV most of the times they've played just because they're so much fun to watch. The depth that they have, um, the way they rebound the ball, the way they're shooting the ball, um, they've just been incredible. But, um, you know, this is we have five people on our team that, you know, this is the last time you get to put on your college uniform. So. I don't think you need much more motivation than that. And um, we're going to give it every single thing we got. Jonathan. Thanks. All right. Caitlin, Jonathan Tannenbaum of the Philadelphia Inquirer. That game last year against them, mm -hmm. do you study that tape to use it all as a point of reference? Or with how much both teams have changed, oh, yeah. does it not matter? Yeah, it doesn't really matter. And um, we don't look at it at all, to be completely honest with you. And I think it was kind of similar. Um, we've had familiarity with uh, Colorado and LSU. Um, and the only team I really went back and watched was Colorado just because they had everybody back um, from the previous year. LSU obviously was completely different in what they had. Obviously, some people returning, but added two different starters. Um, this South Carolina team is completely different. Some of the stuff they run is completely different. We have to guard them completely different. Um, the way they're shooting the ball, um, I mean, they start five different people. Um, you know, you, they switch up who they start at the four uh, position from game to game, so we'll be prepared for either of those. And, um, but I don't think it's something you go back and watch. I don't think it's very helpful at all, other than the fact of maybe what we did. Um, but I think at this point it's just, you know, there's only so much, you know, you can do to prepare on the court-wise. It's more so just watching film of their recent games. Um, and that's, you know, the biggest thing the coaches have been preaching. Caitlin, we're going to stay to our right. Griffin's going to raise his hand so you can see him. Griffin Goodman from the Daily Gamecock. I just want to ask, um, what have you seen from, you know, South Carolina's recent film, and what is the most difficult part of their game to prepare for for Sunday? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, everything. They're just so disciplined in every single thing that they do. Um, 
you know, they shoot the ball really well at all three guard positions. They bring guards in off the bench that are really good. Um, obviously, their height poses a challenge to us, and their rebounding poses a challenge to us. Um, it's going to be very important that we try to box out. But um, I think going into that game last year, you know, to say we're going to beat South Carolina on the glass is probably something that's not going to happen every single time we play them. Um, you know, but you have to be able to manage it the best you can. And I think we did that versus LSU. Um, and that's what you get conf confidence from is just, you know, you kind of weather the storms on the glass. You try to come up with big ones when you can. Um, but they're going to get some, uh, but you have to limit them. Uh, I think those are the biggest, you know, challenges that they pose to us. Caitlin, we're going to go to our left. We'll go back to back, gentleman in a suit and then gentleman in black. Hi, Caitlin. Jack Lita with KCRG. Yeah. You said after you declared for the WNBA, or at least you seemed very, very loose uh, in, in your playing. Now that you know this is the, the quote unquote last dance, are the emotions similar? What, what are the emotions like, Caitlin? To be honest, like, I don't have many emotions of like, this is the end for me. Um, I certainly know it is, but I don't think I can go into the game feeling that. I don't think that would allow me to play my best. I think it was kind of similar to senior night for myself is like, or my last game in Carver versus West Virginia. Um, you know, you're so focused on competing and enjoying every single second of that and helping your team win that, you know, you're not too caught up in, you know, this is the last time I'm going to put on this uniform. This is the last time I'm going to be playing in this arena. This is the last. Like, that's not how we view things around our program. It's just like you're competing for this opportunity. You love this opportunity. Uh, I think once the buzzer hits zero, whether we win or whether we lose, I'll definitely be hit with a wave of emotion, especially over the course of the next week as, you know, things kind of change in my life quite a bit. And um, I think just trying to enjoy every single second because, you know, I'm fortunate enough to be able to be in the national championship again and give it everything I got. You can go ahead. Good. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, Wiley Jahari with Spectrum News. Caitlin, athletes all have their different ways of measuring success. Uh, you and a lot of your teammates obviously have had so many great accomplishments, but for you, when it comes to your college career, is your measurement of success going to be dependent on whether or not you win a title? I mean, no, I don't think so at all. Um, I've played basketball at this university for four years, and for it to come down to two games and that be whether or not I'm proud of myself and proud of the way I've carried myself and proud of the way I've imp impacted people in their lives. Um, I don't think that's a fair assessment. And um, I guess going forward, and I've talked about this with my legacy, is like, you know, I don't, I don't want my legacy to be, oh, Caitlin won X amount of games or Caitlin scored X amount of points. It's, you know, I hope it's what I was able to do for the game of women's basketball. I hope it is the young boys and young girls that are inspired to play the sport or dream to do whatever they want to do in their lives. and. Um, yeah, I think it's just the people that we've brought together, the joy we've brought to people, um, the way people are recognizing women's basketball is a sport. It's fun to watch. Everybody loves it. Um, it can be on the highest of stages. Um, I think you see that with the viewership numbers. And um, to me, for it to come down to 40 minutes and for me to you know, validate myself within 40 minutes, I don't think that's a fair assessment. We're going to stay to our left. We'll take the question from the gentleman in the blue. Kaylin, over here. To your left eye. Sorry. Hi, Will Graves with the AP. You know, you talked the other day about your vision, your ability to see things on the court before they happened. Mm -hmm. I know you envisioned being back in this moment mm -hmm. when you came back last year, but did you envision everything else that has come along with it? With it, And have you had a chance to appreciate it at all, or will it be something 5, 10, 15 years from now when you guys have reunions, you'll think, oh, my God, what a crazy time in our lives. Yeah, I think, uh, to be honest, like after last season, it was like, oh, my gosh, like how can I possibly rep – replicate the season we had um, because I think, you know, what we were able to do with that season was simply magical and, you know, the teams that we beat to get to the point that we were was really special. But um, I think for myself is like, I always believe in this team. I believe in the people around me. Um, Coach Bluter is so good at building teams. Um, so I think there was always a belief of from day one of like, we can get back to this national title game. A lot of things have to go your way. Um, you know, you got to stay healthy. Um, you know, you have to make shots at the right time. You got to have a little luck, uh, things like that. And, um, you know, I think it's been something that, you know, I've tried to soak in the best I can. Obviously, it's hard when you're going from game to game and preparing, um, you know, every single weekend for two games. But I think it's something that, you know, you can't really dream and imagine these type of moments. Like, 
yes, I won that dreams big, but for it to be on this stage in this magnitude is something super special. And I think once you know my career ends is when I'm really going to be able to soak it in and look back and enjoy every single second of everything that we did. Caitlin, we're going to go to the back with Andrea. Andrea Adelson with ESPN. Caitlin, I wanted to ask you a follow-up to what you were just asked about your legacy. Over the last couple of weeks, as you guys have made your run here, there has been a big debate about whether you need to win a championship to cement a GOAT legacy, whether it's on TV, radio, that sort of thing. How does that make you feel knowing that that's a talking point about you going into this game? <laughs> I think the, the biggest thing for myself is like, you know, when you're in the spot like the spot like like this, there's going to be you know a million different opinions on you, and for as many people that are going to love you, there's going to be people that don't like you, and um, you know that's the case with every professional athlete, men or women, playing at the highest stage. Um, and I think what I've been able to do over the course of my career is just focus on the opinions of the people inside our locker room. Uh, that's what I really care about: the people that I love to death, the people that you know have had my back every single second of my career have been the ones that have believed in me more than anybody. And to me, that's really the only op opinions that I'm concerned with are my teammates, my coaches, um, my family, um, the people that I want to make proud every single day. Our next order of questions is going to be Nate, Jesse, Jean Jacket. Those are our next three. I see you, Michael. Nate LaRisha, Westwood One. Caitlin, you talked about post-game savoring every moment, and you t talked about briefly a little bit ago. How many times have you caught yourself appreciating the small things? What's that process been like? And do you have any examples of that? Yeah, I think the the biggest thing is like, you know, no matter what we're doing, um, whether it's media, whether it's, you know, open practice, whether it's a closed practice, you know, you just try to enjoy every single second and go about it with a smile on your face because there were so many so many people that would kill to be in our position right now. Um, there's what 360 Division One basketball teams and to be one of two left standing, like that's a really amazing accomplishment within itself. And uh, I think the biggest thing is like, before every game, I try to take a deep breath and look around and soak in the environment because, you know, whether we've played on the road this year, whether we've played at home, whether it's been a neutral court, um, whether it's been here at the Final Four, Sweet 16 and Elite Eight, it's like the crowds have been incredible. The way people are not only showing up, but like cheering about the game and like invested in the game and they understand the game. They know what's going on. They're passionate about it. And uh, to me, like that's the coolest thing. So I like, I just try to take a deep breath and look around as much as I can before the game starts and soak in um, every single second. Um, and I think that's been one of the coolest things for myself. I want to stay to our right, Jesse. Caitlin, Jesse Kurz with NBC News. Uh, you talk, you're being asked about uh, how other people feel and, and think about uh, what a championship would mean for you and your teammates. But I'm curious how, how you feel about it. Um, mm -hmm. As an athlete, as a competitor, as a teammate, what would a national title mean to you that everything you've done individually for this sport and record-wise just couldn't accomplish in your own mind? Yeah, I think that would be the cherry on top. That would be the you know, top of the list, the thing that you're mo the most proud of. That's something you get to share with your teammates. But at the same time, you know, it would be for every Iowa women's basketball player that has come before us. There has been a long list of really amazing talent that have played in this program. Going back to when C. Vivian Stringer coached the Iowa women's basketball program, they were in the Final Four, I believe, twice, maybe once with her. Um, so many tremendous players that have laid a foundation of people wanting to support our program. You know, before I showed up, there was people you know, we averaged 10,000 fans. It wasn't like magical all of a sudden once we got good that people started showing up. No, like they were there, they were supporting and that's the coolest thing about women's basketball in the state of Iowa. People appreciate it and people know how good it is. So um, to be able to win a national title for this university in a place that has loved women's basketball and you know, done a lot for the game would be um, super special, not only for myself, but my teammates and you know, just this program and the university overall. You could pass the mic, Jesse, across. Hi, Caitlin. Caroline Fitzgerald from Goals. Um, you're an inspiration to so many young girls, but you're also an inspiration to so many women who played sports and basketball while they were growing up. Mm -hmm. So what message would you like to share with those women who've helped blaze this trail to have women's basketball shining like it is today? I would say the biggest thing is just thank you. And, uh, you know, that's what I always talk about is, like, women's basketball is just, isn't just suddenly good. Like, it's been good. Um, and, you know... I'm lucky enough to be surrounded by coaches that have been in this game for a really long time. They coached when, 
you know, 50 people showed up to the game and nobody wanted to support them and what they were doing. And, you know, Coach Jay is our associate head coach, who is one of the best women's basketball players our state has ever seen. And um, for them to be at the forefront of, you know, laying a foundation of this is what women's basketball is and still nobody wanted to support it, for them to now see where it's evolved um, is pretty incredible. Um, they deserve it more than anybody else for them to be in these moments too. But, you know, it isn't just the people that are in the college game right now. It's every single person has come before us. And um, now you're seeing, like, we are on ESPN. We are on nationally televised uh, TV stations that people are like, wow, like, this is so much fun to watch. They can't get enough of it. It's like, you know, it is scheduled in their night. They're sitting down and watching. Um, and I don't think it's only women's basketball. I think it's, you know, you see it across the board, whether it's softball, whether it's gymnastics, volleyball, like people want to watch. It's just, you know, when they're given the opportunity, it's, you know, the research and the facts show that it's people love it. We're going to take our next two questions. It'll be Michelle, then Mike, Michael, then we'll go to the back. Thank you. Caitlin, Michelle Smith from the next. Uh, I was just at Kate Martin's breakout, so I'm going to ask you a couple questions. You've paid 130. Tomorrow will be your 139th consecutive game playing next to Kate Martin. <laughs> so, um, of all of the lasts tomorrow, I want to talk about how that ranks. And I also want to get your perspective on what you hope Iowa women's basketball fans remember about Kate Martin's career. Oh, gosh. I could, I could talk about Kate for a really long time. Um, you know, if I played 139 games with her, I don't know how many she played, which is kind of crazy because she's old. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> that girl is tougher than nails. She's, this is her sixth year, you know. She starts her career off with a torn ACL and misses her freshman season. Um, and I think Kate would tell you that that was the best thing to ever happen to her. Um, gave her perspective on what basketball really is, made her a better leader. She was a naturally born leader, but um, Kate is one of the best teammates I've ever had, the best teammates I've ever had. And the thing about her is she's gonna have her teammates back every single, every single day, every single second. Um, and you know, to see the growth that she's taken as a as a basketball player this year, like she's really upped her game, um, her play, um, while also being the best leader um, for this team. And if you don't have Kate Martin, we're not in this position. I don't know where our season ends, but it's we're not right here. That's what, how much she brings to this team, and every single person on our team would say that, player or coach. So, um, yeah, I think you know Kate grew up with a poster of Iowa women's basketball glued to her ceiling. That's what she fell asleep looking at every single night. And she embodies that every, in every single thing that she does. She truly cares about and loves every person she's been teammates with. And um, you know, I know it'll be special for her to take the court one more time in an Iowa jersey. I'm going to stay to our right. Michael, if you could raise your hand, we can get the mic to you. Uh, Michael Vopel, ESPN.com. Caitlin, I, I remember on Media Day last October, I think one of the things you said was, what you would judge yourself on is what sort of leader you were for mm -hmm. the younger players on this team. And we saw last night how Hannah was kind of glowing uh, mm -hmm. about the things you said. How have you learned to use your voice in terms of empowering people? Yeah, I think that's like one of the biggest things is, you know, my teammates ride my emotions, whether you I like it or not, whether it's positive, whether it's negative. And I think that's something I've had to learn is, you know, they're going to feel what I feel. I'm their emotional leader. Um, and. You know, I think it's something I've embraced, and I think it's it's a powerful tool, like you saw. Like, the things I can say about my teammates and truly believe and instill that confidence in them, that's that's one of the coolest things. As, you know, a point guard, as a leader, as a friend, as a teammate, um, that's how much better you can make people by just believing in them and telling that to them, to their face. And I think that's the biggest thing with Han is, you know, she's somebody that feeds off confidence. She feeds off of the belief of her teammates. Um, and, you know, we know what she's capable of every single night. And um, being able to tell, tell her that, not just show her that, tell her and, you know, give her those words of affirmation of how much we believe in her. I think it just shows, you know, as a teammate and a leader, how much we've all grown um, and how much she's grown. We're going to go to our left in the back. Hi, Caitlin. Uh, Irie Harris, Cleveland.com. You had mentioned earlier of your appreciation for Iowa hoops, and I think as a state, Iowa to the outside man and I have been seen as a big hotbed for basketball talent. Could, but you know better than us. Could you just speak briefly on the scene that you grew up in and how much it means to you, especially now in this moment? Yeah, I think uh, anybody that's been to the state of Iowa knows how good women's basketball is there. I think it starts at a very young age. Uh, you know, the AAU program, program I played for was a Nike EYBL team, all Iowa Tech, and um, we were in 
three Nike Nationals during my time there. Um, and they consistently produce really good talent in the state of Iowa, um, whether it's the high school basketball, whether it's the AAU circuit. But I also think it's the college programs that we have in our state, whether it's Iowa, whether it's Iowa State, whether it's UNI, whether it's Drake. All four of those teams are teams vying for uh, NCAA tournament bids every single year. Um, Drake and UNI obviously being in the same conference usually end up you know, usually both of them don't make it, but at least one of them do. Um, Drake had a tremendous year. Um, we're in the NCAA tournament, really played Colorado pretty solid. Um, but I think that's the biggest thing is like people that are in the state of Iowa know how special women's basketball is there. And people aren't just showing up to Iowa women's basketball games. Like they're showing up to Drake, they're showing up to UNI, they're showing up to Iowa State games. Um, people love our game there. And, you know, every single year we, everybody plays each other. It's like kind of like the state championship. Like that's always one of our goals every year. You want to be the state champion of playing those games and they're fun games to play. They're intense. Um, they come down to the wire and that's what makes them so fun. And Caitlin, uh, Raven Johnson was talking to us earlier and she said she watched the tape of last year's game a hundred times. She said, looking back, she doesn't blame you for waving off her, mm -hmm. waving her off in that one sequence. I'm just curious when you see her play now, what, how is she different now than she was a year ago? Yeah, I think Ravens had a tremendous year. Um, I think not only from a shooting perspective, but you know, as the point guard of a team, as a guard of a team, she's been a true leader. Um, she's led that team. After losing five starters, after losing Zaya Cook, who in my eyes is, was one of the best players in the country last year, um, I really admire everything that she's done this year. Um, I think she's shooting over 50% in her last five games, has shot it over 40% all year, um, you know, and that just speaks to her work ethic. Like, you know, she got in the gym and she got better and I admire that. And, um, you know, I think that's what makes great players great. And that's exactly what she did. And, um, you know, I know the South Carolina team poses a totally different challenge. Um, obviously it's similar in some ways, but the way their guards shoot the ball is, is incredible. And, you know, it adds a whole nother dynamic for us to be prepared for. We can go to the back row. Hi, Caitlin. Um, I'm Iwan Abraham with Cronkite News. You have accomplished so much this season and broken so many records, but you're also ranked number one in women's college basketball for NIL deals. How have NIL deals impacted you, and how do you think they're going to impact uh, the growth of women's sports? Yeah, I think NIL has been a cool journey for myself. Um, you know, it's kind of evolved over the course of my career, and uh, obviously we didn't have it my freshman year during COVID, and then that summer is when it really began, and Nobody really knew what all it entailed, and I still feel like it's kind of that same way. There's just so many questions and always not a lot of answers. And um, lucky for myself, like I've surrounded myself with people that, you know, have my best interests at heart. Um, they want to want me to be my best. And I think the biggest thing for myself regarding NIL is like my focus has been 110% on basketball. And if it's not like all that other stuff doesn't matter. That doesn't come along with it. And, you know, I've been lucky enough to partner with a lot of really good brands that have the same values and same beliefs that I do that are truly invested in women's basketball. They care about women's bas basketball. They want it to go to a place that, you know, it's never been before. Um, so I think that's been the coolest thing for me. And then additionally, I think the way student athletes have been able to use it to make it their own. You know, everybody is passionate about, passionate about different things. And um, to be able to... Uh, you know, use that to show people, I don't know, things that you're interested in and change the lives of other people, I think has been the coolest thing. And also the way people have give, been able to give back to their communities and things they care about has been super special as well. Gentleman standing in the back. Hi, Caitlin. Uh, forgive me. I was down the hall talking to your teammates. No, so okay. sorry if you've addressed this already. Don't but um, I just saw in the press release last night that um, last night's game was you and Kate's 138th consecutive start together. Yeah. Um, and now just tell me about how special these last four years, 138 games have been and how special it's going to be knowing that you guys get to play the maximum, start 139 tomorrow in the championship game. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy to wrap your head around 139 games. Like that seems like a ton of games. And lucky enough, we've had post seasons where we've got a lot of extra games, whether it's been the Big Ten tournament, whether it's been the NCAA tournament. Um, we've been able to have some, some long seasons and that's something I'm really thankful for. And to be honest, like I don't think I have the type of career if I'm if I don't have a teammate like Kate. She's been one that has had my back. Um, you know, she holds me accountable, I hold her accountable. But I think at the same time, like me and Kate are wired so similarly that like we get each other on a different level. She's so competitive. You know, her dad was a football coach growing up. Um, you know, she's 
one of the best leaders I've been around. Uh, you know, she wants the best for her teammates. She's one of the most selfless people. Um, and I, yeah, she's, she's pushed me and I've pushed her. And um, I know when we walk off that court tomorrow, win or lose, we'll have a lot to hold our head up about. And, um, you know, I'm just grateful to not only have a teammate like her, but a friend like her. To our right-hand side, if you could raise your hand in the cream. Yes, please. Claire Watkins with Just Women's Sports. Um, when people talk about experience at this level, sometimes it means this as well, doing a lot of media, living out of a hotel for a couple of weeks. What did you learn from last year doing this week for the first time? And also, how do you handle sort of that feeling of responsibility because you are relied upon to grow the game so much? Yeah, I think uh, coming into last year, I wasn't totally prepared for all the obligations that you have at the Final Four, whether that's you know, media, whether that's, you know, certain events, whether that's, you know, open practice, whether that's, you know, X, Y, and Z, there's a whole long list. But I think the, the way I've tried to look at it is like, how lucky am I? Like, I get to have this opportunity. I get to do these things. Our team gets to do these things. Um, and I think being able to have the experience of last year um, has certainly helped me more than anything. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't view it as any type of, you know, responsibility. Like, sure, it's a responsibility, but you know, this is something that has just come along with the way I've been able to carry myself and the way that I love this game, the way that I've been able to have fun with this game over the course of the last four years. So, um, you know, it's been special. And, you know, if it's something you, you know, view as a responsibility, I'm glad, you know, I can get be able to do it. So um, more than anything, I'm just thankful. Take our final question. Lindsay, if you could raise your hand so they can get the microphone to you. Lindsay Gibbs with Power Plays. I'm just wondering what you losing on such a big stage has is its own <laughs> kind of monster sometimes mm -hmm. what can you take from those feelings and emotions last year how have you grown from that mm -hmm. and how have you changed from that yeah I think it's uh you know one thing it's it's hard when your season ends no matter at what stage it is and then it's hard when you make it to the national title game and you're so close to accomplishing something so great we obviously accomplished a lot of really great things last year, but to be so close to a national title is like being able to, you know, compartmentalize all that at the same time was really hard. Um, and I think the biggest thing for myself is like, I wasn't really upset in the way, I wasn't upset that we lost the game. To be honest, LSU deserved to win. They beat us. They, you know, they shot the ball great. They played a great game. I think it was more so the feeling of like, I don't want this to end. Like it was so much fun being in the final four, advancing to the national title game. And I think it's that same thing right, right now is like, I don't want this to end, whether it's with a win or with a loss. Like, um, but I think the biggest thing is like, you have that little fire inside of you. And I think it's you know been the same way throughout my entire career. I've had some tough losses. Um, and I think those are the moments that have prepared me for right now for this opportunity. And um, at the end of the day, it's a game of basketball. You know, you give it everything you got. Um, but I have a lot of appreciation for the way our team has carried ourselves and all the stuff that we've accomplished. And we're going to give it everything we can to go out there and be able to hoist the trophy tomorrow.